Hi, this is uh, Father Engel, your pastor, and uh, I'm glad to be here again on this video message uh, for this week. Um, I'd like to uh, speak today about uh, uh, Catholic education. And first, I'd like to mention that uh, as early as 1975, I'm sorry, 1965, the Catholic Church uh, uh, issued a, a directive or what we call a a synodal uh, declaration or declaration of a synod in 1965 under uh, Pope uh, the late uh, Pope Saint Paul VI, you know, and that declaration on Christian education entitled Gravissimum Educationis, where it laid out uh, uh, what we call some uh, um, directives or reflections and teachings about the role of the Catholic education in our lives, you know. It says there that the Catholic school has a special importance and it, it is designed not only to develop with special care the intellectual capacities but also to form the ability to judge rightly, to hand on the cultural legacy of previous generations and to foster a sense of values and to prepare uh, the young people for professional life. That's what the, uh, the, the decree says, you know. And so between the students of different talents and backgrounds, uh, the Catholic schools uh, the, is, there, is here to promote a friendly relations and fosters a spirit of mutual understanding. And it establishes, a, as it were, a center whose work and progress must be shared together by families, by teachers, associations of various types that foster cultural, civic, and religious life, as well as by civil society and the entire human community. And so the decree goes on to say that the influence of the church in the field of education is shown in a very special manner by the Catholic school. And so the Catholic school pursues uh, cultural goals and human formation of youth so that its proper function is to create for the school community a special atmosphere animated by the gospel spirit of freedom and charity and to help young people grow according to the new creatures they were made through baptism as they develop their own personalities and finally to order the whole human culture to the good news of salvation so that the knowledge that the students gradually acquire of the world, of life and humankind is illumined by faith. And so the decree says that the Catholic school, while it is open to the situations of the contemporary world, leads the students to promote efficaciously the good of the earthly city and also prepares them for service in the spread of the kingdom of God so that by leading an exemplary apostolic life, they become, as it were, a saving leaven in the human community. Now, speaking of Catholic schools, uh, just this morning, um, I had a meeting with the diocese, just as we, we used to do. The bishop meets us uh, every Thursday. And this morning, um, we had a chance to listen to the superintendent of Catholic schools here in, in the Diocese of San Jose. Uh, she is uh, Jennifer Bertramo. She's our uh, uh, superintendent of Catholic schools. And she mentioned in that meeting that, uh, uh, that the, the, the superintendent with all the principals uh, in the diocese are uh, doing all they can to, uh, to prepare our children uh, in, in in, in our schools uh, in the midst of this pandemic. And so uh, they had, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they submitted the, the plan for a waiver, okay? And that's what I'm going to tell you. And uh, Jennifer Bertram, our superintendent, sent us a letter to us pastors saying that uh, uh, it, there's a plan regarding the waiver process established by the state of California and the county of Santa Clara. So what is this waiver? This is a process that would allow uh, students in grades TK to sixth grade to return to campus for in-person instruction with a strict 
health and safety protocols in place. And so uh, the, the superintendent wants to assure families who wish to have their students learn from home that uh, regardless of what happens in this waiver, our schools will continue to offer distance learning this year for those who choose it, okay? And therefore, she says that over these past three weeks, uh, the diocese has partnered with Santa Clara County officials and uh, our school leaders to complete the necessary components of the waiver application, you see? So that last Friday, according to Jennifer and Bertramo, that uh, they submitted the waiver application for our 26 elementary schools within this Diocese of San Jose. So that the county and the state public health department will review the application and that, uh, of course, we anticipate an answer within the next few weeks. So here, uh, Mrs. Bertramo says that uh, if we receive approval, then each school will begin in-person instruction on its own timeline, taking into account its unique family and staffing needs. And so she says that to support this process, our principal, or every principal of, the, of every school will be sharing with us the details of the reopening plan and asking for our preference, for your preference, for either in-person or distance learning. So um, here, please know that the schools may need to make a schedule, class, and staff adjustments to meet the needs that arise. Now, uh, Ms. Bertama says that for those um, of you with children in grades seven to eight, these students will continue to be served through distance learning. So here we are, and uh, that's all that I like to tell you about uh, for this week. And please continue to pray for our Catholic education. Continue to pray for our uh, Catholic schools. You know, during these times, these um, difficult times, we need all your support and the parish of St. Joseph is all out to support our school, St. Joseph School. And as pastor of St. Joseph, I'll do all I can to make sure that our school, in spite of the challenges that it's encountering, will continue to move forward you know, according to, to the lines of, uh, of, uh, of the church, meaning um, we will continue to be the instrument to which our young people get to know more about themselves, about the world, and God. So thank you so very much. God bless you all.